guten morgen again because we're back in germany we're movie park germany we're country hopping yes we're at movie park germany so we've got a mock to ride we've got i don't know i don't know a lot about this park so it's pretty exciting to go in a little bit blind and um see what this place has to offer Movie Park Germany originally opened in 1967 as a family-owned fairy tale based theme park. It was eventually turned into a movie-based park in 1992, where it only survived for one year. Warner Brothers purchased the park and reopened it in 1996. The park changed hands a few more times and eventually the owner became Parks Reunidos. In 2010, the same owner of many parks that we had already visited on this same trip, and one of the bigger theme park chains in Europe. Many attractions were then updated or changed to include music by Imascore in the past 10 years. I mean, it reminds you, of course, of Universal Studios, but that's not a bad thing. That's great. I mean, the theming is awesome. Everything looks good so far. Really nice park. This theme park has a great mix of indoor roller coasters, themed attractions, and shows, but you can see how some of the themed areas lack a theme or direction and how the budget is not on a level as high as Universal Studios or other large studio parks. Many of the building facades are this EPS painted foam, and because of this, the weathering of this cheaper building style is starting to show in many areas and rides around the park. Most notably, some areas of the main street, rides queues, and especially the Excalibur River Rapids ride. However, it does come across okay on video, and with the low budget that I imagine they're given to create rides, what they do create are really quite impressive and unique attractions. Here we are in Nickland. It's kind of, this looks like a mall theme park outside. They even have like walls. Very, very odd. The Wooden Coaster Bandit is one that you'll need to get on right when it opens for the day, as the line remains the longest in the park throughout the day. I actually ended up missing this attraction while re-riding some of the other coasters in the park, while the others in our group waited in the hour plus long line. It also took us 50 minutes to get into the park at the front gate in the morning since they could not figure out how to print out tickets from our annual passes that were from a different park. We parked the car at 9.44 in the morning and we didn't get into this park until 10.48 a.m. So this really made our day tough here as lines had already built up by the time we were inside. The theme park is split into about six or seven themed areas. The Hollywood Street area features Area 51. It's an impressive, intimate boat ride with some great effects throughout the ride. I would say this is a must do while in the park. Yeah, the two that's water like rides. Ridiculously Damn. good. Like, I'm in shock. Like, that's one of the best water rides I've ever been on. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Want, yeah. I don't want to ruin it, but like, there's like humans in tubes. Like, it's just like weird. Like, yeah, it's yeah really I don't, weird. I don't like, think it should be overhyped either because. I didn't expect anything out of it, so that's probably why yeah, I liked it so much. Yeah. But um, yeah, fun ride that's for like sure. That's like the must-do of the park, I would say, when you yeah. come out. Yeah. The New York Street section of the park has a themed topspin from Hoos. It's got Van Helsing's Factory, which is arguably the best ride at the park. It's a Gerslauer bobsled, but combined with jump scares and theming along the ride track. It's a coaster that surprised me, and it's definitely the must-do ride in this park, in my opinion. It's like a wild mouse type ride. It's oh, like fun. it's fun, like the whole time. Yeah, it has a good like jump scare. I like it. <laughs> the werewolf is really scary, and I loved it. Yeah, you think that Hansa Park has some secret elements? Wait till you see the werewolf. <laughs> That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> We'd head over towards Nickland. You can get two Vacoma roller coaster credits here. This land is placed in a location that requires you pretty much to walk straight through it, and it kind of messes up the flow of this park's layout. It's a bit odd, with two larger attractions being Excalibur and the Studio Tour, placed just past Nickelodeon Land. This very small area is known as Adventure Lagoon, and these two rides are also must-do attractions when inside Movie Park. The Movie Park Studio Tour is the newest major attraction, and it's one that's very fun, an intimate, multi-dimension family coaster. With some effects that I personally haven't seen used before, they're very great. There's so much to look at in such a short amount of time, the ride moves really quickly. So it's a good attraction to do more than once, but it also is kind of an oddly paced attraction because of that reason. Half of our group missed the massive King Kong the first time they rode it since it just moves so quickly between these scenes. Yeah, fantastic scene. It's just a shame the ride's so short, but what it does, it does great. Yeah, so. it is on the short side. Yeah, definitely but. come and check it out. Excalibur features impressive theming that unfortunately is the biggest culprit of that 
polystyrene theming that I mentioned earlier. This ride is visually impressive and completely hidden from view, so it's an extreme surprise if you can look past the slowly crumbling apart theming. All the way on the other side of the park, to the left, past the main street, is where the park drops a bit more in quality. The Santa Monica Pier area is a bit bare, with just a disco being the large attraction in the area. And then the Old West themed area is pretty deserted, but it has an SLC clone somewhat located near it, as well as an excellent drop tower from Intamin located right in the middle. Bandit is also in this area. This is a ride that you really need to get in line for right when it does open. It was finally time for the main attraction that you see at the entrance and from most areas in this park. It's Star Trek Operation Enterprise. This is a mock manufactured roller coaster and really it rides exactly how it looks. It's pretty short but this backward spike element and triple launch along with the moving transfer track out of the station makes it an okay length of a ride. There's hang time and there's pops of airtime and an overall short layout that is fun. Some more theming along the ride layout or the ride being totally indoors would really make it stand out and be a coaster people would talk about but instead it does fall a bit short and it's really just a ride that people don't think about. The queue and the start of the attraction are amazing and the build up to this average roller coaster is pretty well done. Depending on how busy Movie Park is, it's either a half day or a full day park because if the crowds are heavy, the large collection of rides that the park has that are pretty much all worth riding make it tough to do. The park's layout is just a bit all over the place. It's not very cohesive. You seem to go into the entrance and there's just little hidden nooks and crannies with rides placed. So just make sure that you look up the park layout and don't miss any of these rides. I'd really like to come back here, but it would be for a half day again, and I'd make sure to be here an hour early to make sure that I'm in the park first and I'm getting on these rides because they do have a lower capacity, a lot of them, and they're all pretty unique and worth doing once at least. That would be it. Toverland would be open later at night today, so we would head there and we'd try to get everything done in the half day that we have at the Toverland theme park, which really became one of our favorite stops, so don't miss it. And until next time, thank you as always for watching. I appreciate it and see ya.